And we are live all across Northwest Ohio from Justin F. Russell Stadium in Tenora. Big matchup tonight in the Green Meadows Conference as 5 and 1 Tenora, I'm sorry, 4 and 2 Tenora plays host to 5 and 1 Ayersville. Hello again everyone. With Miles Holiday, I'm Randy Roberts and Miles We've kind of uh, went through the NWOAL, the early part of our uh, broadcast slate. Teams, for the most part, kind of separated themselves. Now we're going to take a few weeks to do the same thing here in the Green Meadows Conference. Well, partner, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Oh, high stakes drama tonight, playing for the victory bell. A little bit of dislike, I would say, between these two communities always makes it a little more interesting for these types of games. And you referenced their uh, records earlier, but... This is an Ayersville team that could very easily be undefeated at 6-0. and Had a tough mm -hmm. call in week one against Delta. Also, they're sitting pretty at 6-0. and But this is going to be a fantastic football game. It's going to really decide who's going to move forward and have a chance to win the GMC. And before we get to deep into it, it looks like they're going to do the alma mater, so that will give us the opportunity to run through some numbers here. Miles, let's uh, quickly talk a little bit about the uh, visiting Ayersville Pilots. 5-1 and overall, 3-0 and as you said. In the GMC, ranked third in the latest Division 7 Region 26 computer points, led by senior quarterback Blake Howenstein, does a little bit of everything, maybe not the best passing numbers, but it runs the ball and is efficient kind of running this pilot offense. Well, how do you score uh, touchdowns and big yardage, M-I-C? K-E-Y, Andrew, Mickey, they can score with him. The first-year coach has done a great job. Him and Brandon Benfeld, they are combining to run the offense. You'll see uh, Benfeld up in the press box tonight. Mickey will signal in the plays, and it helps when you have outstanding runners. It is a ground-oriented attack, and guys that can really carry the football. Own burner, you remember that guy from a year ago when we mm -hmm. had him? He was outstanding. 694 yards, averages 6.5, and as you referenced, Blake Houndstein, 656 yards, so they're going to get it down on uh, done with the ground because they got a fantastic offensive line. So it's smart. You can chew chew up uh, yardage and you can chew up the clock if you're running the football. Yeah, top running team in the GMC at 245 yards per game, and when they do want to throw the football, they have a very capable guy there, junior receiver Abe Delano some gaudy numbers when he does catch the football. Yeah, 19 catches, 315 yards, two TDs. Oh, that only works out to 16.6 .6 yards per average, and they will move him around, so it makes it tough to play single coverage on him. And you talked about the offensive line. As you take a look at the Ayersville lineup, and there's some names there. Been two, three, maybe four-year players for this pilot team. The thing that is really impressive is Brady Clark, the left guard, and Cade Hiddencraft, the right guard. Randy, you're going to see two guys that can pull, and they don't just pull to get in front. They pull and get in front and latch on and block people. You know, football, you watch guys, and you see a lot of guys that can pull, but they pull and they don't get in front of anybody. These guys lock on. That really allows this running game to get on the perimeter and be effective. Let's talk about the defense for the pilots for a couple of moments. A couple of good senior linebackers one of them being Bernard. Also, Weston McGuire saw him play half a year last year. 54 tackles to lead this Ayersville team. We had Weston McGuire two years ago against Edgerton, and he must have had 50 tackles that night. He was absolutely all over the football field. It was sad that he had a little bit of a leg issue last year, but he's back, and he's making tackles galore. And we'll stop momentarily here as they do the national anthem at Tenora. Great job with the uh, performance of our national anthem. Miles, pick up what we're talking about with that Ayersville defense. Talk about a couple of good linebackers, McGuire and Burner. 
big defensive end, Brady Clark, three and a half sacks, kind of that wrecker on the line that causes a lot of trouble. And not only that, but he has also caused two fumbles as well. So if you're going to have a really good linebacker in play, a lot of it goes hand-in-hand hand with what you can do up front, right? you got to have guys that are doing a good job up front to keep the offensive lineman off your linebacker. So it's a, a great triangle right there with Clark on the inside and then allowing those linebackers to roam free, McGuire, Berner, and Delano. How about the uh, Howenstein kind of leading a veteran group in the defensive backfield? Yeah, Howenstein's thrown seven interceptions, but he's also picked off three. Is there anybody in the area that has been part of more interceptions than him? Yeah, Howenstein, he is a ball hawk in the middle of the field, and I like him because he is a physical dude also. He'll come up and he will lay some shoulder pads on some runners. He just doesn't play to pass only. All right, let's uh, turn our attention now to the Rams of Tenora. And, Miles, it's been a uh, very interesting 24 to uh, 36 hours for this uh, Ram team. They'll have an acting head coach tonight in uh, Jeff Sleesher as they try to uh, – improve on their 4-2 and two mark and 2-1 and one in conference play. Yeah, announcement was made what Wednesday at about midnight, mm -hmm. I believe, uh, that there was a situation, and Coach Sleesher will be taking over as an interim. Uh, Kenny Krause, long-term head coach, has been put on leave, uh, um, paid leave, as there's an investigation. But uh, So Coach Sleesher, first guy that's really going to call offense uh, in 24 years, other than uh, Kenny Krause here. Um, but you look at the offense, uh, guys, uh, we're not 100% certain who's going to be there. We have word that some guys are going to be out of the lineup. But, you know, one thing that is consistent, Edwards has done a great job carrying mm -hmm. the football, and Gavin Eckert does a good job at, uh, at uh, quarterback. But really a lot of what they do, Randy, it's the offensive line that gets things done. You're in, you're out, right? It's a wing T-based team. I mean, if you take a guy from 19 uh, – <laughs> 99 and put him in the offense now he'll probably know what to do right yeah. it's been a very uh, cookbook type offense for a long time here at Tenora yeah it's a run heavy uh, offense 164 rushing yards a game you mentioned to Brandon Edwards senior 418 yards couple of touchdowns Dallas Dockenhouse with the 354 yards two scores as well both uh, just over uh, five yards a carry so they're they are the kind of the backs that run this offense yeah, it's, it's a, anytime you run wing T, you got to have that fullback that can get you to tough yards inside, and, and then you got to have that halfback that can get outside. So they got the right duo right there. For the uh, defense for the Rams, big player there, junior defensive end Graham Askins, 36 tackles, five and a half sacks. Yeah, five and a half sacks. And if you're going to be a team that throws the football, you better make sure your tackle and maybe a tight end and a back is ready to stop Mr. Askins, or else you're asking for trouble. Five and a half sacks, you can build that total in a hurry. A couple of good linebackers as well. Player that we saw a year ago, Grady Gus Weiler with his 54 tackles. Some know him as Gus. <laughs> Understand it is Grady. <laughs> Braden Rosti, 43 tackles, also a couple of interceptions. Yeah, the thing that jumps off the field is Gus Weiler's speed. He is a lateral player. He can chase you down. You carry the football, he's going to find you. So getting set for our matchup between Ayersville and Tenor, I want to tell you that our pregame sponsor for a broadcast tonight between Ayersville and Tenor is the State Bank. Invested in Northwest and West Central Iowa, skilled objective and caring financial planners. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll do our checks of the game right after this. Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday, back with you here from Justin Caressel Stadium, just outside Defiance, as we get set for this big matchup in the Green Meadows Conference. And we'll get to everyone's favorite part of our pregame. Let's take a look at those state bank checks of the game. Miles, let's start with visiting Ayersville Pilots. That number one partner, you better recognize. That is what the defense has got to do in a hurry. Chuck Martinez, Chuck Chuck Martinez, the defensive coordinator for Ayersville. He's going to run a system tonight where the guys are going to recognize the formation, what Tenor is in, and then adjust their front accordingly. So they got to recognize quickly, then communicate. Number two, pin, pull, and go. Tyson Schlachter, wait till you get a load of this guy. He's like 6'6", 230 pounds. He plays tight end number 32. Too. He pins a lot, blocks down, allows for those guards that we talked about earlier, Clark and Hancraft, to get outside and pull. And then when you get the football, you can go in a hurry. They got Burner, who's got some serious speed. And number three, break out the specials. 
As that practice the other night, Coach Bainfeld and Coach Mickey, they're working on a little trick stuff, going some tendencies away from what they've shown on film. They think they got some uh, gold on that play card that they can break out the specials with. Yeah, we had a chance before the game to talk to head coach uh, Andrew Mickey. Pretty confident young man. He's very confident. And if you go to practice, it reminds me of a young Bill Inselman who at practice relates to absolutely everybody, doesn't coach one position. He floats around, and he is a power-positive guy. Fun to watch him coach. Let's take a look at the state bank checks of the game for the home to Nora Rams. Yeah, number one, low pad level, right? This is going to be a physical game on the line of scrimmage, so if you're the low man, you got a chance to win. Stay low on the line of scrimmage. Number two, blitz the motion, key the counter. This is an Ayersville offense that loves to use a lot of jet motion, Randy, so mm -hmm. blitz that motion when it comes to you, and then keep your backside looking for counters coming back because if you do those two things, I think you'll do a good job stopping Ayersville's offense. And then number three, break tendencies. This is the first time in forever someone else gets a call offense at Tenora. Don't run fullback trap on first down. Break tendencies, change it up, come out, maybe throw the football a little bit. They've only thrown it 80 times all year long. Throw it on first down, watch everybody go, oh my lord, a first down throw. Have some fun tonight. On this matchup, the 47th all-time between these two, Ayersville leads the all-time series 24-21-1, and one, but it is Tenora that has dominated this series as of late. Rams have won five in a row, 15 to the last 16. Last year's matchup a bit one-sided with the Rams winning 39 to nothing. And why is that significant? Well, that's the eighth time in this run of 16 that Ayersville was shut out. And in four uh, more games, it's been one touchdown or less. So it's the offense for Ayersville that's got to get going. Uh, that game a year ago, one that we did, that was total domination. Uh, you remember they had Christian Camaso at the time playing fullback, who's at mm -hmm. Defiance now. And, boy, it seemed like on every single play offensively, they gave it to him early in that game, and it was 8, 10, 12 yards. And before you know it, that game was out of hand. It is the battle for the victory. Bell just about ready to go. So this uh, night also really starts kind of the second half of the GMC slate along with Ayersville. Antwerp on top of the GMC at 3-0. Archers at 6-0. Came here to Tenora. Scored a big win, 20-14. Their first win over the Rams, I believe, since 2004, I think I read. Mm. A snapping a long streak. Edgerton, Tenora currently 2-1. and one. And a lot of those teams still have to play each other. And for the first time all football season, we see people bundled up. Is it cold out there? It's a little bit cold. And as soon as that sun drops, man, you're going to see it get really cold. Uh, big game for Ayersville because not only the victory bell on the line, but if they win, now it sets up the huge showdown with Antwerp next week. They host that game. Antwerp 6-0, undefeated in the GMC, obviously. And then uh, Tenora, big game uh, for the victory bell also, but it's mm -hmm. homecoming here. It is. And uh, Tenora won the toss, elected to defer. So it's going to be Ayersville getting the ball first with the sun to their back. So I don't, I don't want to put pressures on our uh, WOSN bosses, but you said there's a, if, if Ayersville wins, there'll be a big game between a couple of undefeated teams in the league. Uh, it'll be a huge you game. Think maybe Absolutely. Some people with cameras and that'd guy be can great, wouldn't a couple it? Couple of announcers. That'd be great. Can, I think Ayersville would love to have us over there again for a big game. Not, not telling anyone what to do. Just, <laughs> just maybe they don't know. I don't know. I'm it's just, an old, it's an old Jedi mind trick. I'm just you know. And again, a pregame sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Ayersville and Tenora is the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio, skilled objective, and caring financial planners. Yeah, gave out some free popcorn today in pregame. They did. So That's State kind of Bank stepping up. I believe they had their uh, their CARES truck. I saw that as we were pulling in. Yeah, yeah. community outreach. That was nice. And my former employees of Present News, Tim McDonough, part of that. So. Well, what better way to reach my stomach than with popcorn? Thank you, State Bank. They knew. This one's teed up, and the ball's going to reach the end zone. So a touchback to begin this one. We are underway. That was a good decision by Wolfram to let it skip by into the end zone. Took a couple steps to his right. Nice kick. Kick it where they ain't. Is that the plan? See the steam coming over the field. <coughs> I thought LeBron was here, and it was the, the rosin. See, he wants to play for the Buckeyes. I'll take him. He wants to play with Bronny. Ayersville will start this one at their own 20. 
set everything up. Handoff is on first down, running just off the left side. A little bit of a second effort there. Yeah, good second effort because number 67, Javin Gaines, six foot, 270 pounds, senior inside. Boy, he's going to be tough for Ayersville to move. He got uh, the hit at the line of scrimmage, just couldn't hold on. Ends up going for four was uh, Owen Burner on the call. Second and six coming up now. Good strength by Burner because it should have been a, a stop at the line of scrimmage. Pilot set up in the shotgun. Run the counter, and that is going to get about a yard. Defense for Tenora, about five green jerseys pushing well, the runner back. You want to talk about how to handle outside leverage, you just got to watch Dallas Dockenhaus, number 24, Tremendous job of keeping that outside arm free and forcing all the action back inside. That was designed to get outside, but Dockenhaus sealed it down. Gain a one on the run is going to bring up third and five from the 25-yard line. Ayersville already taking a little time, letting that play clock run down. Let's see if Casey Helton dials up some pressure here on third down for Tenora. Looks like man coverage across the board. Yeah, they're going to run with Burner. Howenstein and uh, Burner in motion. Now he's going to take off and run. And down he's going to go for a loss of about three. Taryn Ward, I believe, is going to get him. This is really a good coverage shack. Played man coverage, kind of threw off at Ayersville. Yeah, the pressure gets there. Howenstein tries to take off and get it with his feet. But the front four of Tenora stayed Really disciplined with their pass rush and gets Hornstein to down on the ground, causes fourth down. That's yeah, going to be a loss of a couple. Brings up fourth and eight in the punt team for Ayersville out on the field. It's not the way they wanted to start with a three and out. And now we'll have whistles. And we'll see what the holdup is here. I think it's going to be delay a game. Well, we have an issue with... Oh, Oh, 12 Tenora's men on the field for Tenora. The field. Well, so it's going to be might, decision time now. Yeah, it's going to change your thought process here. Fourth and eight is going to uh, turn into fourth and about three. And Coach Mickey sending his offense back out. They're at least going to show they're going to go for it. Could it be trying to draw off, though? Boy, oh boy, partner. How about this cough? They go for it. Because if you don't pick this up really in this football game, you are given to Nora tremendous starting position. Howenstein in the huddle. They'll break it here. You'll get to the line quickly. And straight ahead needed the 30-yard line, and it looks like the Pilots will get just to it. Uh, they jumped into a power set. Nobody split out wide. Three running backs listed in front of Howenstein. And his quarterback run all the way, and... Oh, Lord, how about that football call right there by Andrew Mickey? It is a Northwest State Community College first down. Our first downs tonight brought to you by Northwest State. Get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. First and 10 from the 31. Burner again will go in motion. Give it to him on the sweep. He's able to turn the corner. Still on his feet. He'll get another Northwest State first down as he's out across the 40. It looks like they're going to mark him right at the 41. Now, Burner's got great speed. They're going to get Weston out in front and Schlachter outside. Are, are you saying Burner's a burner? <laughs> he is a burner. And, of course, they're getting the Clark out in front along with Hannoncraft. Boy, that is a great job of getting to the edge. How about the work by Schlachter? Sealing it, pin it, and then pull around. They'll give him 10 on the run. It's going to get a first down out to the 41. And partner, how big was that penalty? Huge, because otherwise Tenora's got the football and they're cooking new life for Ayersville. See Ayersville's how they take advantage. Two first downs, they'll fake the sweep the other way. Owenstein will keep this one, he's gonna pick up about five. Into the bread basket it goes and the Magician pulls it back out. Nothing up my sleeve, presto, quarterback trap inside, picks up about five yards. Anytime you run jet sweep, you have to have counters off of it. That time they showed one of them with the quarterback keeper on the trap. The second and five from the 46 yard line. A lot of bodies up in the box for Tenora. And we'll get a flag. This one is going to be stopped before it can start. And we will have penalty against 
Ayersville. So you can tell by our camera angles tonight that we are set up on the visitor side. So we'll get a lot of backs tonight. That's Houndstein. He's got to make sure everybody is set. You always teach a quarterback. You look from left to right across the formation. Make sure everybody is set. That time he just focused on the lineman in front of him, snapped it early. So that's going to back it up to a second and 10 to the 41. It's what, try to run in a hurry. Things like that occasionally will happen. Fake it now. The first pass attempt of the night. This one's caught out to the sideline in front of the Tenora bench. It looks like they'll get some of the yardage back here. Yeah, watch the arm of Houndstein, right? His feet aren't really set. He is just throwing all upper body. That is some serious arm strength running it from the middle of the field all the way out to the sideline. Yeah, I believe that was that Wolfram that hauled that in. Yeah, Wolfram, their leading receiver on the year. Pick up about six. Yeah, we're already inside of seven minutes when this one's going to be snapped. Third and manageable. Get the quick pitch again, trying to get to Verter. Turn the corner. Now he's going to cut up field. It's out of the first tackle, but can't get out of the second as he is wrapped up from behind by Graham Askins. Yeah, watch Askins. He is all the way to the top side. He is just going to continue to pursue, kind of work and work and work and work. And right there, he's going to lay some lumber on Burner. That is running to the football. If you're a defensive guy, you got to love seeing guys run the football. And fourth down. No decision here, right? You go again. Oh, well, you already it, went from it on right. your own 30, so what's yeah. what's up near midfield? Fourth and about two. And again, that power formation, another flag coming in as Howenstein fighting forward. I don't think they were set. Right now has the first down, but we'll have to see what the penalty will be. Yeah, it's going to be a false start. They weren't set. Ran the exact same play that they did last time on fourth down to pick it up. I think he would have got it again, but no, no decision now. You punt the football here. And that is exactly what will happen as the penalty will back up the Pilots. So they run about half of the clock off this opening quarter. Eight play drive, they pick up about 25 yards. And now we'll send the punt team on the field. Man, got 11 this time, Tenora figured it out. Snap goes back, end over end punt will take sideways bounce and the Pilots will down this one at about the 30 yard line. And that is where we will see Tenora take over with the football for the first time tonight. And this might be one of those football games where you might get a possession a quarter, right? There's not gonna be a ton of possessions. No, there's not. You're gonna have to do something with the possessions that you have because Tenora as we preference in pregame, they, they do not sling the ball around the park. So it's going to be ground oriented in Ayersville, as we talked about, loves to run the football as well. It's going to have a kind of old school feel to it running the football here. Yeah, six minutes already gone by this opening quarter. Tenora touching the football for the first time tonight. We might finish this before the sun sets. Full house backfield, a little confusion on first down. And a good job running out of bounds will be the quarterback, Gavin Eckert, had everyone faked out as he's got the run. Yeah, smart play right here by Delano. He's going to get outside and light up Eckert, but the last second peels off. You're going to see him right there. If he hits him, it's going to be a penalty. Smart decision. Eckert's just going to get about six yards. Here we call it second and about five from the 36. It's like that shot of Eckert running right into your living room. How about this? Empty formation on play number two for Tenora. Eckert, the lefty, the quick throw. That one's going to be juggled, held on to. Brandon Edwards, Edwards, the speedster of the bunch. Remember a couple of years ago, he would come on, kind of light everyone up. Now kind of the main back for this Ram offense. Yeah, it's nothing more than the quick little bubble screen outside, read really well by Ayersville. They show the speed of Edwards, kind of outruns guys, gets some positive yardage. Huge third down for Tenor. You don't want to give the football back to Ayersville after they chewed away six minutes. And no gain on the play, so third and five from the 36. E 
each team, kind of with their classic look. We didn't really talk about the uniforms a lot. Here's Edwards. Someone's trying to reach in and rip that football away. And Edwards is going to be close to a Northwest State Community College first down. Now, Tanar caught a shift by Ayersville. Remember, Ayersville's trying to match their front, according to what they see with Tenora, moved late, and they ran a power to that side, had an open hole. And I think they're gonna measure this. Yeah, it looked like he needed to get across the 40, I don't know where the hash mark is at, to the 41. The spot of the football right now, I'd say is just gonna be a little short. I'm gonna say he has it. I've been undefeated all year at calling these. That doesn't sound right. No, I haven't gotten one right. But I'm going to go against you. I'm going to say this is a first down for Tenora. And they stretch the chain out. How and about it that? It is a first down. All huh? right. Feels good to win. Broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> yeah, I'm just glad they measured. You know how many times back when I was on the <laughs> sideline, it's like, can you measure that, please? And they're like, no. Far, no. far sideline. No, not doing all it. All the way across. A big first down for Tenora. And yeah, nothing worse, your defense spent six minutes on the field, you run three plays, give it right back. Handoff on first down is going to be the first man through as they'll go to uh, Dackenhaus. He was going to get about four and a half yards. A good surge by that offensive line, going back to the line of scrimmage right away. The second, we'll call it six from the 45. Eckert. Give the trap off the right side. That one's going to be pushed back. The game will go for a couple as they go back to Dockin House. Well, it's the first thing you install when you're a wing T team is fullback trap inside, 20 21 trap, 20 to the right, 21 to the left. Back to back plays, got them about eight yards. You have to stop that play first and foremost if you're going to defend the wing T. Pick up a three on the latest run, brings up a third and short. Third and about two and a half, maybe three. Let's go. Eckert in a shotgun. Going to run out of this one in a little bit of trouble. Able to cut up field. And it looks like, depending on where he goes out of bounds at, he's going to have the Northwest State Community College first down. Now this thing should have been blown up in the backfield, but the athletic ability of Eckert allows him to escape. I believe it was Hanencraft that had him dead to rights in the backfield. Gave him a little oopsie daisy and got away from him. Now we're going to need to bring the chains out for a second time in one drive as he runs out of bounds of the Tenora bench, as you can see, with the chains on the Ayersville sideline. The official doesn't want to eyeball it from 53 and a half yards. I'll tell you what, part. I'll go first this time. I'm going to say he's a little bit short. Well, I have to say he gets it then. I thought he clearly had it. I thought he was further downfield. And they stretch the chains out. Oh, and it looks like by the whole length of a football. So, if you're keeping score at home, how do you score that one, partner? I think we're, what, are we one and one? I think so. That's a long way to go for that chain gang. They're getting their steps in. Good for they those guys. Definitely are. So, first down for Tenora on the Ayersville side of the field, the 49-yard line. Very quickly, we're down under four minutes left in our opening quarter. And now we've got everyone moving without the snap. And I don't know much, but I do believe that's against the rules. <laughs> well, both teams even things up with their false starts now. And I got to tell the center, hey, we need you to snap it. Tenor is penalized back to their own side of the field. First and 15. I think it's Cameron uh, Urives, the center, number 55. I'm saying that correct. Is that how you say that? Urives? Yes. All right. Urives, Urives, Urives. We'll go with. Apologize if we're wrong. There's Eckert. He's going to be brought down up by the shoulder pads. Good clean tackle. Uh, I believe that was that Schlachter. Big. <laughs> he's just, he's. He's a man out there among boys. Yeah, he just used the left arm, kind of sickled him down to the ground, fought off the block. That is a tough matchup. Schlachter, as we've seen on the basketball floor, physical presence 
You run to that side, you're going to have trouble. You might want to double team him on the outside if you're going to run there. That was going to be nothing but more in a quarterback sweep to that side. A loss of five, doubled on the penalty. It's now second and 20 for the Rams, back of their 41. Eckert again, quick throw, getting it out to Edwards to that sideline, and he's going to get out of bounds before he's really able to cut upfield. Uh, ran belly the last time, or ran bubble screen last time, come out and run it again. Trying to let Edwards get in space, use his feet to pick up the first down, but just enough to get him to about third and about 16. He'll mark this down with the 45. Tenora, not, uh, no slight against them. Not a big third and 16 offense. Now you gotta watch the bootleg right here. He'll fake it, trying to get out, and now running out of one tackle, but can't avoid the second one. It's Cole Schweinhagen. We well, talked in our pregame about safeties that come up and hit, and that's Blake Honstein, number 10. You saw him come up to the line of scrimmage from his safety position, made the tackle on Edwards. That is a physical safety play right there. It's three yard run, still fourth and long. Just like Ayersville, Tenora will pick up first down and then have to punt the football away. So a penalty followed by a negative play, kind of handcuffs Tenora as Ayersville nearly gets to that one. Tight spiral, fair catch called for, then letting the ball bounce. And they knew it too, as this one is gonna be touched down deep in Ayersville territory. Yeah, tough play for Ayersville, almost got the block. That was Berner that came close to it and then the ball hit. That ball really sailed. Better not trying to catch it if you lose it. Because you try to catch it late and you turn your body, that's gonna be a muff punt. Ayersville will take over, they're gonna call that their own three it looks like. Still late in this opening quarter. So maybe after this play, we'll see if we get a couple of moments, we'll get you our uh, trivia question for the night. Hey, you, you come up with a couple this week. Uh, you did some really good work. I like the second one you came up with. First down for Ayersville. Just kind of run out of the shadow of their own goal line. Burner working off the left side is able to get out near the 10 yard line. Now watch Burner's ability to quickly miss guys and then see that, how he's got that little shiftiness, little hop step, turn vertical, and then spin to get him some extra yards. That's a really good inside run right there by Burner. Picked up five on the run, it's gonna bring up second and five. So while we have a minute with Ayersville looking at their uh, play charts, give you our uh, trivia question for the night. Send a man in motion. Fake it to him as Howenstein will keep this one himself and get out across the 10-yard line. Yeah, second time that they've ran that quarterback trap inside off of the jet sweep motion. So if you're the backside linebacker, you see jet sweep motion, you focus on quarterback, come fill that A-gap on the trap. A third and two coming up here now for Ayersville. Still man coverage for Tenora. You see it running with the motion. Handoff going to the right side. And it should be enough for a first down as they go back to Burner. Watch Burner starts to the left hand side, sees a little bit of opening to the right hand side, has enough quickness to hop over and get vertical. He knew the yardage he had to get, dives forward for the first down. Picked up four, that is enough for another Northwest State Community College first down. Ayersville's gonna let this run all the way down. They're only gonna have to run about two more plays here in this opening quarter. Fake with Burner, a throw, this one's gonna be incomplete. Flag coming in, opposite side of the field. I wonder if it's guys getting upfield that aren't supposed to be getting upfield. Yeah, you, you see some linemen releasing. You you wonder if they led the, read the play card because, you know, they signal things in and they're looking at their wristband. You wonder if one of the linemen thought it was going to be the jet sweep because the jet sweep fake occurred. 
Yeah, that's what it's going to be. Legal man upfield. Hey, who can follow the lineman wanting to catch a pass? Yeah, that's true. So that will back the pilots up five yards. Sweep here, nice job, cutting up field. Come up with a stop is Gavin Eckert. Yeah, Eckert, one of the best players on the football field for Tenora. The senior flies up, makes a big play. You know you're good because look at all those decals on your helmet. They don't give those out to guys that aren't making plays. That's gonna be the end of the opening quarter. No score here from Tenor, and we'll take a break. WOSN. Well, no score here from Tenora as we move into quarter number two. Oh, we told you that uh, this matchup for the victory bell, 47th all time between these two in the GMC, ranking it among one of the longest running series in the Green Meadows Conference. Can tell you that uh, how many, what is the longest running series? Mm, well, you got to go back to teams that were part of the original GMC, right? And then count up from there. I'm going to say Antwerp is in there against somebody. Yeah, there might be some playoff games thrown in there uh, as well. So we want to know. The curveball, the curveball yep. by Randy Roberts. What is the number? If you know the schools, we can tell you there are four series that have been played the most in the GMC. So if you can guess the number for bonus point, you can tell us the schools. We'll get you that right before halftime. So here's Burner on the handoff, second and 17. About that little pushing and shoving after going on away from the uh, play. Yeah, it was Weston and Eckert getting tied up right there. Fisher going over and saying, hey, take it easy, fellas. Weston's telling me, hey, all we're doing is playing hard. It's a rivalry game, Mr. Official. We're going to go after each other. Looks like he's going to lose about a yard on the run. So third and 16 back from the nine-yard line. And Javin Gaines, number 67 in the middle of that Tenor defense. He has been tough for that Ayersville offensive line to move. Howenstein gets the snap. He has time. Fires middle of the field. Will overthrow everyone and the pass is incomplete. Now, probably fortunate he overthrows everybody because if he throws this on target, see who's sitting on it. That's Eckert right there. He might have been able to pick that off. That would have been a huge turnover for Tenora. Yeah, looking for top receiver Abe Delano. So the punt team back out on the field. We'll tell you that our title sponsor for our broadcast tonight between Ayersville and Tenora is the State Bank. Invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio. Skilled objective and caring financial planners. I can't wait to see what the trivia question and answer is. The mayor of Northwest Ohio, Randy Roberts, does a great job coming up with those. All right, punt, able to get this one down. Short punt as well. Eckert's going to field this one at the 40. He's got the corner as a stiff arm as well, and it's going to be taken out of bounds. It's going to be good field position for the Rams. Well, this is really a continuation on the punt from Tenora, a series before, right? Pinned Ayersville deep. Defense does a good job of keeping them hemmed in. They set up the left return. Might want to kick it away from Eckert the rest of the day. He is quick. Tenora is going to take over on the Ayersville side of the field right now. Not bad news, though. Eckert was the guy that was down, stopped play for. Looks like he's holding that left shoulder. If he can't go, he's going to have to come out for at least one play, but he's holding that left shoulder pretty tight. New trainer out to see if he's taking a look. A new quarterback will be in on this snap. Eckert running over there. See who's going to, is it Doc, Dak House? That's going to be the court? Nope. Dominic Graziani, number five in at quarterback. Handoff goes to the first man through. Minimal gain on the run. Graziani, 5'10", 165 pound a sophomore. Well, you better be alert in rivalry games, right? You just never know when you're going to get in a football game. 
Graziani going to the sideline, getting the play. No gain on the run on first down, second and 10. Ball you see just outside the 26 yard line. Best opportunity here for the Rams. Comes after the short punt, good return. I formation here. Pitch is gonna go to Edwards, cutting up field. Works his way through the first wave. Can't get through the second wave of defenders as there's a lot of the powder blue that's gonna bring him down. Yeah, a little bit of the old student body right. Try to get sealed on the edge, get guys to lead around. Get Edwards on the perimeter. It looks like Graziani is going to be the guy that they're going to go forward with in the rest of this series. They're still working on that left-hand shoulder of, of Eckert. And a gain of five brings up third and five. You've got to believe Eckert, though, being a senior in this game, if he can get back out there, he will. And off this time, Duckenhouse had a great job knifing up field once again. Will be Schlachter comes up with a big stop. Yeah, belly to the play side, strong side. You better find Schlachter on the football field and call things away from him because you've run at him. He is absolutely destroying things. Nobody has come close to blocking him. A field goal attempt now by Tenora. Yeah, Rams trying to get on the scoreboard here. So Jacob Bishop, sophomore, trying to get this one from about what, 43 yards. High one, and that one is going to sail right, and that field goal attempt is no good. Well, how big was Eckert getting hurt on that drive? After the punt return, set him up in great field position. The senior has to leave the game. And he's not going to be out on defense either. It's going to be Graziani playing his position at, on defense also. So the missed punt, or I'm sorry, missed field goal, turn the ball back over to Ayersville. Pilots take over from their own 20. See there in our scoreboard, 8.59. Left to go before we get to halftime. And now flag before we even start, and someone for Ayersville, a little jumpy. They're going to say Delano wasn't set outside, and then Weston went in motion. Can't have two guys moving at the same time. Going to cost Ayersville five yards. Going back them up from the 15. Ayersville's been pinned in deep in their own territory here last couple of drives. That one's steamed to the give on first down as they go to Burner. Looks like he'll get back near the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, tough to get anything going when you got Gaines inside. He has been a block of granite inside for Tenora. Tough for Ayersville to move. I want to think about getting outside more. Pick up just a couple. It's going to bring up second and about 13. See one of the Ayersville linemen kind of holding his hands up. Wasn't sure what the play call is. No. Howenstein kind of moving some people around. As everyone said, drops back to pass once again. And this one is going to be intercepted. Yeah, Dominic Graziani, who just came in the game at quarterback and then come in the secondary. It's going to be a little pinwheel off the hands. Graziani, look at the ability to focus in and catch it as it's coming off the hands. And get it before it hits the ground. Huge play for the Tenor defense. Sets the offense up in great position. Uh, Wolfram just unable to haul it in. And the young sophomore pressed into duty has come up with an interception. We'll take a look at this one more time. Defense! Yeah, see, Wolfram looked like he had it at first. Throw a little bit behind him. He got two hands on it, but threw it up in the air as he tried to catch it the second time. First down, Graziani looks to pass. He'll bring in the defense. And that was going to be incomplete. Edwards unable to haul that one in, try to pin it against the shoulder pad, and it's going to be incomplete. Yeah, bootleg to the right. Edwards by himself in the outside. Does he actually have control of it? I don't think he ever really did. I think Ayersville is trying to say, yes, he did. That's a fumble all the way, but I don't think he really had it. Was that Schlachter in the face of Graziani might have, again? Might have tipped it a little bit as well. It's going to bring him second and ten. 
And Schlachter's so tall, he could tip it with his forehead. Tough to throw over that guy. 6'4", and he's got long arms. You, see, he hit, you notice him everywhere he's on the football field. He just jumps off there. He's at the top side. Handoff this time, Edwards, and he's not going to go a lot of uh, or very far upfield. And Schlachter again in on the play. Along with Ethan Cordaway. Cordaway gets there first. Schlachter helps out. There's Rambo to Ram behind the bench. Mascot, got my picture with him before the game. Rambo doesn't look too happy, though. He should be smiling. They're in good uh, field position. How can you tell if, if Did you see him? He looked disgruntled. Always looks disgruntled. Third and nine. Go to Dockenhouse this time. He's going to run right into the teeth of that pilot defense. Well, you kick the field goal again. Or do you go for it on fourth? Looks like they're going to send in the kick send unit. Send in the kicking unit, yep. Yeah. Give him a couple of yards to the 19, so about a 36, maybe 37 yard try coming up here. This one looks like right in between the hash marks. Had enough leg on it last time. High snap, this one able to get down, and the knuckler is gonna go through. Well, it doesn't have to be the prettiest kick, it just has to go through the uprights. And it does, almost blocked right there by Ayersville. But that is a missile going through the uprights. It still counts as three. Well, field goal, first score of the night. Tenora with the early lead. We'll take a break here on WOSN. Well, the interception leads to a field goal. Tenora with a 3 0 lead here as we play late in this opening half. Short kickoff. This one will be fielded up near the 10 yard line. Good return coming here for Ayersville as they're going to get out of the shadow of their own goal line. Last couple of possessions have been started deep, but Ray Wolfram able to get a good return. You know, Wolfram kind of atones for the drop uh, that led to the interception on the last possession. Run the right return. Edwards got down there in a hurry, but he actually overran it for Tenora. Kind of created a seam. Wolfram took advantage of it. Edwards gets everywhere in a hurry. You see the he kid does. He fast. I want to see him and Burner line up. Put him on the 40. Run to the end zone, see who wins. Pilots start this drive with their own 39-yard line. Handoff will go on first down. As Owen Burner looks like he'll get about a yard. They tried to use Weston in motion and use him to kick out, and then Burner come up inside. Well played by Tenor. They're doing a good job of seeing motion and playing it as it comes to them. It was DeLarber, Trenton DeLarber, that number nine came up and made the play. That's a name that we're very familiar with here in uh, Tenor. Second to nine coming up here. Ball just past the hash mark of the 40-yard line. Burner, the man in motion. They'll fake it to him. Sowenstein will run straight ahead. He'll get good yardage. Pick up five, maybe six, and a very manageable third down coming up here. About the fourth time they've ran this, Hannonkraft leads the way. Anytime they've run the quarterback trap off of the jet motion, they've been able to get five or more yards. If I'm Ayersville, I focus on getting the jet going and coming back with the trap. Get those two plays going again. Put that Tenor defense back on their heels. It's third and three. See the spot of the football just past the 45 yard line. Ayersville needs to get just shy of midfield for first down. Set the formation once again. McGuire will go in motion. And Howenstein plowing forward will have the Northwest State Community College first down. Now I found something that they like, right? Got the kick out block outside. And then the double lead inside, Weston and Burner lead the big quarterback, Howenstein, for a first down. Saw number 26 for Tenor there, Devin Llewellyn, nearly ripped that ball away. But it is a Northwest State Community College first down for the Pilots as they get out to the Tenora 49. That's good influence blocked by Ethan Cordaway, also at right tackle. Third 
flip McGuire again. He'll be the H back to the right side. Burner's going to run the opposite way. Just kind of spins out of one tackle, but it's the second one that'll do him in. Dockenhaus will bring him down right at the midfield stripe. Yeah, about third time we've said Dockenhaus's name. Comes up, makes a big play. Just seems like Ayersville, every time they get something going a little bit, they get either an unforced error with a penalty or a tackle for loss, gets them behind the chains. Of course, the turnover was huge also. Second and 11 now from midfield. Ayersville, a pretty impressive opening drive. They chewed up half of the opening quarter clock. Went from their own 20 near midfield. It's a throw, this one caught by Wolfram. Able to elude one defender. He's going to have a couple more. He'll fall forward. Looks like he'll be about a yard shy of the first down. Now, same route that he had to juggle and wound up being intercepted. This time it's going to be a better throw right on the numbers. Makes the first man, Graziani, miss. Almost gets a first down. Picks up 10, and it should be third and about one from the 40-yard line. It shows you the confidence that this Ayersville staff has in Wolfram. They'll go back to him after he has the bobble. Some point in time, they're going to have to go vertical. They're getting man everywhere across the board. Straight run. And Howenstein will have that Northwest State Community College oh, first down. Oh, oh. Hey, do you like collisions? If you like collisions, watch this. The larva comes up. Ooh, Howenstein says, hey, how's my elbow taste? I'm going to run you over. Physical football play right there. Hey, you got to love football when you see that stuff. First down is brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Northwest State, get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. A little bit light in the linebacker spots for Tenora with guys not dressed. Ball on and the ground. Ball's loose. And Burner's going to fall back on top of this one. Ayersville will keep possession. Let's see what happens. Going to be the read play. Yeah. Houndstein reading it. Put it in the belly too long. Did Burner's going to hold it. Did Dockenhaus punch that out or was it just dropped? It looked like it was a combination of both. As the quarterback, Allenstein, pulled it out late, comes on the hip of Burner. Very fortunate. Ayersville dodges a bullet. The loss of six on the play will bring up second and 16. Pilots backed up to the Tenora 40. Allenstein looking to throw, has time, fires middle field, has a man open, hauling it in, oh, yeah. all the way for the touchdown. Well, how big is play action pass? Run the football, run the football. Get the secondary looking in the backfield. You ran the jet all night long, fake it. Hit the post behind it. Nobody in the middle of the field. This is easy score, Katie Bartador, Abe Delano. Hey, he's letting everybody know. 40 yard touchdown pass, first touchdown of the night. Comes with 2.16 to play before halftime. And now a two point conversion try coming up here. Trying to get in, and it looks like it'll be Howenstein. That'll make it 8-3 as we're yeah. going to take a look once again at this touchdown pass. This was thrown like a laser to the middle of the field. Tough throw, right? Howenstein sees a guy all by himself in Delano. Don't take anything off it. Throw it where he has to catch it. Great over-the-shoulder catch and celebrate early. Why not? Because you're all by yourself. Touchdown, Ayersville. 8-3 after the two-point conversion. Not only has he got a great arm, he's also got a great head of hair. Look at the locks, the lettuce hanging out of the back of that helmet. We talked to him before the game, asked him what kind of product he uses. What was his answer, partner? None. None. Shampoo. Great. Great as, to be young as again. A, as another man with great hair, I knew exactly what he was talking <laughs> Look about. Look at that. that. That's some serious, serious locks right there. I thought I thought Lawrence was back in town. I thought <laughs> I thought maybe maybe Jacksonville got rerouted up there. <laughs> oh, jo okay. I thought you meant Joey Lawrence. Oh, that too. <laughs> <laughs> Different kind of Lawrence. We'll do we'll do child stars of the nineties later. <laughs> I can't wait to see what your trivia question answer was coming up also. We'll have that for you in just a couple of moments. Oh, what a big play for Ayersville. Great play call by the offensive staff. Knew that Tenora would be peeking in the backfield. 
Use that jet sweep motion. Short kickoff, this one will bounce, stays in play. Fielded just shy of the 20-yard line. Trying to get a little creative on the return. Cole Anders get this one out across the 20. Yeah, Denaro's going to get away with one right there. You're going to see the block in the back allows him to get free. Should be about 15 yards past that with a creative block, but the officials don't call it. Ayersville says, no big deal. We'll still make the tackle on the kickoff. So the Rams will get into their own 22, 210 to play before halftime. Oh, Graziani still in at quarterback for Tenora. First down handoff is to Edwards, and he is going to be suplexed down from behind. Little belly to back suplex. Took him to the ground, didn't cover him for the pin. Let's see who gets him. Kind of running their buck sweep to the outside. Really good block by Taryn Ward, number 52 for Tenora on the outside. Yeah, it was Brady Clark. Brady Clark with we'll the send belly to back. wrestling school. Pick up six on the run, second and four. And it's going to be an incomplete pass. Sure was. I think he actually blocks us with his face mask. Do have a flag as well, so we'll see what the penalty is. I don't, I don't think Tenora was set. This is going to be on, so the officials will look over at the Ayersville bench. Do you take the, do you decline it? Or do you want to give them another shot at second down? I think you take the penalty, take the yardage. I like second and 10 instead of third and five. Remember, Ayersville's got three timeouts left. Yeah, no one's used any of their timeouts, so we got plenty to go around as we play this final minute and 38 of the opening half. Uh, Delano had the deflection a moment ago. Inside backer blitz. Run, fighting for yardage. And we might see that first timeout used, and it's going to be Ayersville takes the timeout here as Edwards not going to get a whole lot of yardage. Yeah, Chuck Martinez, defensive coordinator for the Pilots, says, Weston McGuire, let's start sending you on some backer blitzes. Number nine gets in there in a hurry. So we'll take a timeout here, timeout on the field. Big play coming up for Tora when we return. Sun beginning to set. It gets uh, early and earlier in the night now we see that. I liked it we didn't see this till about 9 o'clock at night. Yeah, I enjoy those as well. I actually enjoy it too when the temperature stays up. <laughs> Seems like when the sun drops quicker, the yeah, temperature drops does. quicker also. So I'll we'll get you our uh, trivia answer here before we get to halftime. I'm uh, going to go out on a limb and say that we might see another timeout or two. A lot of it depends here on third down, right? If you're as well, you stop them to a minimal gain, you call another one. I think Tenor's just ha hoping to get out of the half. Third and seven, quick pitch. And Edwards is not gonna get to the sideline. Flag comes in. Are we gonna see a face mask on the end of this one? Uh, Edwards jumps up in a hurry. He signals it's gonna be a first down. Uses a stiff oh, arm. An offensive face mask. Might be. It's Hanencraft that makes a tackle. Edwards thinks it might be a, co a horse collar tackle. Well, and that's exactly a, what it's going to be. It's a first down. Ayersville coach is getting the explanation. Don't think they're going to be happy with it. That's a tough call. A 124 left. Tenora has all three. If you're Tenor, though, don't be foolish. Do anything that cause you moving forward. They're going to be in shotgun here, though. Penalty moves the ball out to the 38-yard line. Graziani in a shotgun. Looking to throw under pressure. Rolls. Now he's going to load this one. Deep downfield has Anders. Makes the diving effort, but it's going to be incomplete. Well, how about Graziani moving his feet around to give himself some extra time? Almost came up with a huge play. If you're Ayersville, how do you let anybody get behind you in this situation? Loosen that secondary up. Second and 10 from the 38. Also stops the clock with a minute 15 
to go before we get to the half. I think Graziani's nerves have settled down a little bit. I would this think game. so. I'm sure when he first got in, he didn't expect to play tonight with the senior Eckert in front of him, but looks like it's going to be him from here on out as Eckert is on the sideline with his shoulder pads off. Oh, it's usually the indication that you're, you might be done. Graziani looking to throw under pressure once again, rolling out. And now he'll fire the football away. It's going to be tipped. And will it stay in bounds? Intercepted. Yeah. Well, Wolfram, it looks like, comes up with a pick on that sideline away from us in Tenora. And Graziani looks left and comes all the way back to the right. One thing is apparent, he can buy some time with his feet. See someone break open late, avoids the sack. But who's going to get the tip right there? It's going to be tipped by Cordaway and then falls in the hands. You got to feel happy for Ray Wolfram. Comes up with that interception. Had the drop early in the half that led to a turnover. This would, time he comes up with one. Would like to mention Graziani took a hit, which, by the way, in the NFL, Ayersville would have been penalized for. At any rate, big play coming up here. Allenstein, all sorts of time to throw now under pressure. Unload this one into double coverage, coming back. Catch is going to be made inside the 20 yard line. I right, got to credit Abe Delano working his way back. It's the same play they scored the touchdown on the last series. Well covered by Tenora this time, but Delano breaks it off. Watch him just come back, work, work, work. Houndstein buys some time, throws it as far as he can. Abe comes back, he just splits the defenders. Doesn't high point it. He just boxes him out like in basketball. What a play by Abe Delano. Ayersville's going to call a timeout here with 52 seconds left. That's going to get them down to the Tenora 17. So with just under a minute left, that'll give us the opportunity to give you that trivia answer. So again, our trivia question tonight, this meeting between Tenora and Ayersville, 47th all-time, ranking it near the top of games played between GMC schools. Heading into this season, because I think some of them have already been played, so numbers will change. How many games played between two schools is at the top of the list? I'm going to say Hicksville and Tenora is on the list. Okay, how, we're looking for a number. 52? 50. 50. Antwerp Fairview, all Antwerp right. Hicksville, Fairview Wayne Trace, Tenora Wayne Trace have all played 50 times heading into this year. That is the most in the Green Meadows Conference. Yeah, a lot of really good football games over the years there. Empty formation for Ayersville. Watch for jet motion. They'll fake it. Breaking free once again as Delano is in the end zone for the second touchdown of the night. Well, I think it's actually Schlachter. I'm sorry, Schlachter with it. You're correct. Schlachter, the tight end. Kind of like the old pop pass, right? Fake to the fullback, hit the tight end up the seam. Picking on Graziani, the youngster. That is a huge physical mismatch. Schlachter kind of shows his athletic ability going and getting it behind him. Looks like Ayersville going to go for two here. How big was that turnover by Tenor to end this half? This might blow this football game open. Two big plays leads to the touchdown. Schlachter with a 17-yard touchdown reception. And it looks like they'll run in the two-point with Howenstein. And with 45 seconds left to go before halftime, Ayersville suddenly is up 16-3. This has been their short yardage play, but they've been running it off tackle. This time, all the lead blockers sweep, lead out in front, pick on the corner. Howenstein, he's a physical presence carrying the football. Another two-point conversion for Ayersville. Take a quick time out here as Ayersville with a couple of big scores to pull away late in the half. Turnover leads to a couple of big plays for the Ayersville Pilots. They deposit it 17 yards. Schlachter with the touchdown reception, which you got to give uh, Delano credit that first one. Into double coverage, probably a lot of people. Oh, what a oh, play. Oh, what do we do? Oh, what a great catch. Yeah, just having the wherewithal, right, to get to the spot, split the defenders, box them out, and go and get it. Great play by Abe Delano. 
It has, it has uh, re-energized this Ayersville side. This is a squib kick. That's going to stay in play. Anders has got to field this one. Now watch out. And he's going to take a hit as he goes down at about the 33-yard line. If I get first, yeah, really going to let that go out of bounds. Really good discipline by the Ayersville kickoff team in the middle of the field. Didn't collapse to the sideline too early or else it would have allowed him to get all the way back to the other hash, and then you would have had some serious trouble. The free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in the App Store or the Android Play Store. I can tell you it's exactly what I'm going to do here in about 37 seconds when we get to halftime and my... Broadcast partner is going to look at me and go, hey, who's <laughs> winning this game? It's who's, my, who's winning a game over? It's my best Miles holiday, by the way. It's a good run by uh, Edwards. He'll pick up the Northwest State Community College first down. Hey, inside trap. Ayersville playing as if they want to stop the pass, so they're a little bit light on the inside. Tenor takes advantage of it. They get the first down and then a timeout called. Yeah, first down kind of changes what they can do with 30 seconds to go. Yeah, one of my favorite things, though, you referenced us going over the app. Afterwards, when we go after after the game, go eat, mm -hmm. and you read the scores to me, I, I love that. That is, <laughs> that is so much fun. Now, folks, I don't really sound like that when I ask them what the scores are. I say, sir, <laughs> yeah. could you please tell me? That doesn't sound right. <laughs> as, as long, and I passed the great Poupon as long as well. <laughs> uh, oh. Us enjoying our spot of tea after the game. That's right. A little crumpet. I'm going to go heavy to the top hand side. Trips to the right. Come on, guys. Only rushing three, dropping eight for Ayersville, bringing late pressure by McGuire. Yeah, big run kind of changes what they do here. Graziani tried to load up. He's going to fire this one deep downfield. Two receivers, and it's Edwards comes up with a big catch, and he's going to have the first down deep in Ayersville territory. Well, Graziani has showed off his feet early in this game. He's going to show off his arm right here. Sophomore, he can light it up. Hits Edwards, and you got to wonder, how does Edwards get behind? Yeah, two receivers at 2 on 3 Edwards comes down with it at the seven-yard line. Yeah, it's Burner that allows him to get behind him. Look back over his shoulder, looking for the trajectory of the ball. Kind of lost track of Edwards. All of a sudden, this has become a shootout in the last 128 of this half. Yeah, 36-yard pass, and it's now first and goal. For Tenora at the Ayersville 7 with 21 seconds to go. Each team who a couple of minutes ago had all three timeouts. Now, as you see, just one remaining. So, typical battle in this uh, river rivalry. Second river rivalry we've uh, gotten to do this year. Now, River Rock in week one. Victory Bell, by the way, has now made an appearance over in the... Uh, Posing sideline from where we sit. Here's Edwards on first down, trying to run right in the teeth of that Ayersville defense. Yeah, run inside lead. You have one timeout, so you, you can run inside. Edwards almost gets it to burst on the backhand side. Good job by that defense of Ayersville to keep him out of the end zone. Yeah, Dockenhaus lost to the headgear as well. Ball's on about the one, one and a half. Yeah, they're calling it the three. Three, the three. Okay, I see it now. There it is. Three-yard line. Well, it's kind of tough if you're Tenor. Out of timeouts. There's the bell. I've nice rung it before. I've actually nice had that. shiny. Had it in my car. I actually brought it to a game once upon a time. Well, that's pretty cool. So those but traveling it, trophies or something else. If you're Tenor here, second down, you don't risk a, a, a run because the clock's going to – Unless you get up and clock it in a hurry, the clock's going to run out. Well, do so you, do you, you throw actually, it. it looks like the spot of the football is right actually where the extra point is attempted. Yeah, on the three-yard line. So do you do you run? Do you go? Do you do you stretch the field and try to use the boundary? I try to get Edwards into the flat with my quarterback Graziani roll into it. See if I can pick it out that way. Graziani seems to be more comfortable when he's in the gun. Here, Ayersville, dial up some pressure, Chuck Martinez. Split backs, a little confusion of what they're going to do. Graziani looks to throw, 
had a man, but it's incomplete. That was a late pressure by Schlachter, also this might have been a touchdown. Graziani, some confusion running the boot. I don't know how he got that throw over top of Schlachter. A little bit inside. Anders might be able to catch it for a touchdown. Nine seconds left in this half. Yeah, and Cole Swinehag and nearly ran into him and almost blew the whole thing up. Yeah, how good has Schlachter been all night long? We've called his name seemingly after almost every defensive play. Third and goal. Yeah, watch Edwards. He's in the inside slot, number 10. From shotgun, bad snap. Graziani gets this one. Has a man open in the flat, just has to throw it away as he's under pressure. And it's fourth down. Yeah, they're gonna run the flood route to the top hand side. Try to hit Edwards on a quick out. He has him right there, but the pressure is in his face. Second time the pressure has forced a bad throw by Graziani. Fourth and goal, three second, four seconds to go, excuse me. Was that Cordaway that got in his face, number 52? Yeah, it looked like it. And we'll see what. I think Arizona's going to call their last time out. I think they're waiting to see what personnel Tenora was going to send out on the field. A little surprised they didn't allow him to get set up in a formation, then call the timeout. Yep. You know, kind of like the inbound play in the NBA. Because there's no chance that they would ever, you know, change it. Change after it the timeout. up. Yeah, I, I love the NBA because the, the last five minutes take what two hours. That's the best. You don't have to watch a whole NBA game. Just tune in the last five minutes. Oh, it takes forever, doesn't it? it? It really does. Always keep an eye on who they're talking to in the offensive huddle. Those are the guys that are going to be involved in the play. You see the offensive staff getting together. If you're Ayersville, though, Chuck Martinez, bring pressure from outside the right-hand mm -hmm. side of Graziani and then bring some inside pressure in case they try to run the football. You're on the three-yard line, last play of the half. Your whole playbook should be at your disposal, but you know what they're doing. They're, they're gonna, gonna try to field they're goal. They're gonna try for some points here. So what is essentially the distance of an extra point to end the half? Block coming in and Bishop is going to hit his second field goal of the night. Clock did not run either, so the see what the officials do here is they're going to get together. I think they just now realized it. I wonder if the timer. They may th they may just call it a half. Timer, that's, yeah, that's got to be it. Timer probably thought it was an extra point because yeah, that, that's an untimed down. So let's see what the white hat elects to do here. Yeah. Usually any kick is at least four seconds. You just let it run. Yeah, they're going to let it run out. So good call by the officials. The field goal is going to end the half. So Tenora elects for some points. We've reached the half here from Crescent Stadium. It's a 10-point lead for Ayersville, and we'll have some halftime coverage for you when we return. Hey, Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday, back with you here from uh, Justin F. Caressel Stadium in Tenora. 16-6, Ayersville with the lead over Tenora as the Rams got the uh, extra point length field goal last play of the half to uh, make this 16-6. We take a look at some halftime numbers on this one for Ayersville. 26 plays for 157 yards. Tenora's run 25 for 95 17 rush attempts for 36 yards for Ayersville, 17 for 45 for Tenora. Biggest difference is in the passing game where uh, Ayersville 7 to 9 for 121 yards, Tenora 3 of 8 for 50 yards. Now play action has been the difference in this football game. Two big plays by the Ayersville offense off of play action, jet sweep action, and then hitting the receiver behind the secondary. That was big time play calls by the offensive staff of Ayersville uh, is uh, – Coach Ben Felt and uh, Coach Mickey getting things done. Yeah, time of possession, big difference as well. Ayersville, 14 and a half minutes to uh, eight and a half minutes for Tenora. Yeah, I hope the second half is played like the last five minutes of that first half because that was some exciting football. It was. Things really loosened up in a big way. If you're Tenora, you know, what do you do? You're starting quarterbacks out. Graziani's now into sophomore. He shows that things are going to happen when the ball's in his hands. Might not always be good things right now, but he's an exciting player. 
Edwards is your big play threat. How do you get him involved, get him in space? Because otherwise, it's going to be tough for you to move the football. That Ayersville defense is doing a good job. Take a look at some uh, other numbers. Third down conversions, Ayersville 3 of 6. Tenora 3 of 7. Penalties, Pilots flagged 5 times for 35 yards while uh, Tenora flagged three times for 15 yards. Yeah, false starts have really hampered Ayersville at two drives. Once uh, the first drive, they got out to midfield. Fourth and short, we're going to go for it again. Had the false start to stop that drive, and another drive where they had a false start put them behind the sticks at first and 15. So some unforced errors slowing the pilots down. Again, 16-6. You see there, Ayersville lead over Tenora at the half. Take a break and have more halftime here from Tenora after this. Ayersville currently with the lead as they battle for the victory belt with Tenora, 16-6. Again, along with Miles Holiday and Randy Roberts, and we don't get the chance to do this that often at halftime, but uh, we figured now that we're seven weeks into the into the season, we might want to start checking some of Miles' work. So <laughs> it's time that we start checking the checks. Hey, folks, that, that's a brave young lady behind there. Look at that. She is throwing fire up in the air and catching on the batons. That is uh, pretty cool. All right, take a look at Ayersville, number one. You better recognize, they've done a pretty good job of recognizing formations. Uh, uh, Tenora's thrown at them. Tenora's thrown some uh, empty looks at them. They've checked to that, so they've done a pretty good job of that. Number two, pin, pull, and go. Yeah, they had success on the jet sweeps. Because of the jet sweep success, they're able to get number three, break out the specials. Boy, those play action passes, those specials that they haven't shown, they were wide open, led to two scores. So I'd say Ayersville not only doing well on the scoreboard, but doing pretty well with our checks of the game. And uh, how has Tenora done with their checks? Yeah, number one, low pad level, kind of struggled a little bit. The inside quarterback run by Howenstein has been a difficult thing, and then the Overloaded formation on the two-point and short yardage situations. The low pad level has gone to Ayersville on those. Blitz the motion, key the counter, and counter plays have not eaten up uh, Tenor, so I'd say they've done a good job right there. Then number three, break tendencies. They have mixed up uh, some uh, different formations. Kind of tough to do, though, because what do you have in your offense with your quarterback out? And a lot of guys missing in the lineup as well. So kind of tough to break tendencies because you have to really run what you're comfortable running because of all the personnel changes. And we can't thank State Bank enough for what they've done, not only supplying Miles with the free popcorn. It was great, great free popcorn. They gave it to everyone, but we didn't tell him that. We just what? told him the popcorn huh? was, yeah. What? It wasn't just, I, I know you, you enjoy walking up to, to yes. places saying, yes. I'm Miles Holiday. <laughs> Where's my popcorn? People give you stuff, and you think that's a you thing, and we get it. But Hey, I got to compliment the Tenora concession stand because I tried to give them money, and the guy said, it's free. <laughs> oh, Your money's no good here, no son. no good here, sir. Uh, so I can't thank the State Bank enough. And, again, they are our title sponsor for this broadcast tonight between Ayersville and Tenora. Invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. We'll take one more break. When we come back, we'll have the second half for you when we return on WOSN. Just about ready to go for the second half here at Crestle Stadium in Tenora, 16-6. Ayersville with the lead uh, over the host Rams. Big matchup in the Green Meadows Conference. One of uh, two Justin F. Caressa stadiums here in Defiance County. Mm, yeah. Two trivia questions today. <laughs> Miles, where is the second one? Um, uh, close to us. I'm, I feel as if it's really near us. Okay. Oh, look at the moon. On, on the campus of Defiance College, but that's, well... Well, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Oh, comments, oh yeah, 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 of course, of course. And before we get any further in tonight, I want to tell you that we're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV slash John Reed. And remember, folks, you're not allowed to nominate any of your favorite broadcasters. Ah, so, Darn it. The People's Champion Randy Roberts cannot right. be nominated. So, 
No votes for Danny Holbrook. Out of bounds with Danny Holbrook every Saturday morning in the Lima Land area. Miles is now a regular co-host of that show. I've been on there a couple times. Good time going down there and hanging out with Danny on his radio show. There's two people in that room who think it's a good show. <laughs> well, Tenora's going to have to make some hay early in this half. I would say they have to get the next score of this football game. If Ayersville goes ahead and punches another one in, it's going to be really tough for Tenora. You know, limited of what they can do offensively because guys are out, and plus you got a sophomore that you're trying to learn how to play the game, didn't expect to play, and all of a sudden he's in. So good thing for Tenora, though. They get the ball first this half, see what they can come up with. And a couple long plays for Tenora to end that opening half. Had to settle for the field goal the last play of the uh, second quarter. So potentially could have been about 16-10 instead, 16-6. So still a two-possession game. Second half kickoff underway. Andrews again will field this one up at about the 27-yard line. Cole Andrews will get this one out to the 40. And a good field position for Tenor as we begin the second half. Yeah, Weston McGuire, yet another tackle for him. He put him on kickoff. He runs out, makes a tackle on Andrews. Good thing he did one-on-one -on -one with Anders, he might have been able to break that. The game plan for the special teams of Ayersville. Apparently, they're going to kick it short, see if they can run down on there and get it. That's Bill Zartman, the special teams coach for Ayersville, getting those guys playing some good special teams. So Rams start this one at their own 40. As we begin the second half, once again, Dominic Graziani in at quarterback. Eckert. Suffered what appeared to be maybe a shoulder injury as there's the give as Edwards will turn the corner on the right side, get upfield, and he'll get about five. Alex Homier going to lead the way, number 53. Andrews trying to get it done as well. Can't get it sealed, but you just see the athletic ability of Edwards. Makes a guy miss. Gets positive jet sweep motion for Tenora. Play number one to start this half. Second and five from the 45-yard line. Split backs, pitch again to Edwards. He's gonna cut back, he's got a lot of white jerseys, and it looks like he's gonna be thrown down after a minimal game. Well, they've identified where Schlachter's at. First two plays this half, they're gonna run away from him. Hannon Kraft does a pretty good job of forcing it back. Schlachter's gonna get there on the tackle, working his way down the line of scrimmage. Not bad strategy, run away from the big guy. No gain on the play, so third down, five coming up here. And they'll run straight ahead, and it looks like that's going to be enough for Northwest State Community College first down. Now their favorite thing to do out of the I formation run, ISO. Another time they ran it, that wasn't ISO, they ran toss outside for the sweep. But I think we're going to see a lot of Ann Edwards moving forward for this turnover offense. Pick up about seven is enough for first down. First downs tonight brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Northwest State, get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. Another run straight ahead. Very vintage Tenora football going to Dallas Dockenhaus. Yeah, Dockenhaus, kind of the inside dive to Dockenhaus through B-gap. He really gets the football before Ayersville set. Kind of some free yards. This is a opening drive of the second half, really going back to their basics. Smart move by Tenor. You go back to the plays that you run the most, see if you can execute them. A good gain of six is going to bring up second and four. See the Tenor student section all in black. Students got in free tonight here at Tenor. Good stop there on the run, and who else? For the big man for Ayersville coming up with a stop in Tyson Schlachter. <laughs> Schlachter just splits two guys, bear hugs them to the ground. Might want to go back to that strategy of running to the other side. Is it that easy? Just, hey, see, see the man a lot bigger than the other 10? Run away from him, please. Yeah, how impressive has Schlachter been? Third down and about fours. The option pitch, Edwards trying to cut up field. 
That one's going to be snuffed out. It looks like it's going to be fourth down. Yeah, Blake Howenstein, the safety comes flying up, and it's a good thing because the option pitch might have been able to pick it up. Howenstein makes the tackle. Fourth down, no doubt about it. Tenora appears they're going to go for it. And down 10 on the plus side of the field. It's going to be fourth and about three. If you're everybody on the Ayersville sideline involved defensively, you're yelling, watch the football. Don't fall for a high hard cadence to get you to draw, jump off. You need, uh, I guess, uh, just more like two yards, so my apologies. Anderson now flip. He'll be the H back to the right side. And it looks like Ayersville did just that. It's amazing how many times we've watched football in the second hut. The first hut gets you with a loud bark. You get all keyed up. You know, everybody's saying watch the football, but that loud hut gets you to jump. So the backup sophomore quarterback, Graziani, able to entice, I don't know if that's the right word, they get Ayersville to jump. Draw, he drew him. Drew him, him to draw, draw, drew him off sides. How about you that? Go. Graziani, take off, he's gonna run this one. Ball's on loose! Ayersville says they have it, the officials agree. And the pilots force the turnovers. We take a look. Yeah, Graziani's going to be quarterback sweep to the left hand side. He's going to cut it back. Sees daylight to his right hand side. Doesn't put the ball away. Pops out right there. That's going to be recovered by Brady Clark. Brady Clark, yeah, another big play on off on defense. Brady Clark, he's got two fumble recoveries coming into tonight. That's his third one on the year. Pilots. Take over at their own 35. Ayersville run four minutes off the clock. Get a couple of first downs with nothing to show for it. Oh, Howenstein looking to throw under pressure. Trying to step up, flag comes out here. He's gonna take off and run, takes a hit, he'll go down. We'll have to see what the penalty is. Uh, Dallin Dockhouse finally gets to him. There's gonna be a hold call on the Ayersville offensive line. Let's see if we can pick it up. So it came in late after he began to scramble. We saw a pull of the jersey there. I don't know if that's where it was out at. That's yeah, Graham Askins, the guy that leads this Tenor defense in sacks. Kind of used a spin move, caused the hold to occur. Wondered if Tenor was going to take the play. They're going to luck to take the penalty, use the field position. Smart move because they're really going to have to have a short field if they're going to score points. Yeah, it's also 10 yards from the spot of the foul, so the quarterback's scrambling. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a big penalty, which it is. It is huge. First down in uh, Defiance County. And they're going to get backed up to their own 17, so you see gonna, first and 28. You're going to see 28 yards. Simple give off here is Owen Burner. Burner trying to gain some of that back. Gets to that far sideline. He's finally taken down by Dallas Dockenhaus. Yeah, Burner has not been brought down by the first guy all night long. This continues as he's going to use that stiff arm to knock Devin Llewellyn down and keep running. But Dockhouse finally gets him to the ground. Picks up about nine. Second and still a long ways to go. And don't be surprised if Ayersville keeps it on the ground the next two plays just to get themselves better field position to punt the football. Steen has a man coming in motion. We'll give to him in the stretch play. Burner once again, he'll take a big hit as he's knocked it down. Yeah, Askins, great job. Watch him split the block right there. Keep fighting outside. Forces everything back in to his buddy, and that's Carter Gilliam that comes and makes the hit initially. Yeah, Landon Newsom, number 76, the one that finished it off. Yeah, Newsom wouldn't be denied. That was a heck of a hit. Gain of three on the run. See third and 16 now from the 29 yard line. Fake the stretch play this time. A man open in the flat pass is gonna be caught well shy of the first down as Ayersville's gonna work it back 
looks like to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're trying to hit Wolfram on a vertical after the play action, but it's well covered by Graziani. Dumps it off to Weston McGuire. <laughs> he pays for it, doesn't he? Gets them back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, it's fourth and about nine. The punt team out on the field now for the Pilots. Already playing a time possession game here. Each team's only had the ball once. Gone halfway through this quarter. Quick punt. This one's going to be scooped up. Graziani gets this one. Back at his 30. And he's going to be taken down after a short return. Now almost blocked, but Weston McGuire, who plays the punter protector up front, stepped in front, took the first green jersey coming at him, or that would have been a blocked punt. And if you're Tenori, you need those types of things to get back in this football game down by 10. It's going to be some kind of event that gets you in. I'm not sure you're going to be able to put together 8 to 10 plays to score. Tenori takes over at their own 37, already halfway through this third quarter. Again, a lot at stake in this one. Ayersville trying to stay unbeaten in the GMC. Pitch again, Edwards. He's gotten uh, the heavy workload here to begin the second half. Tenora with the one league loss came to Antwerp, so they're trying to stay in the GMC race. That was a tough football game. It was a 20 to 16 or something like that. It was a really close yeah, 20 game. 20 to 14. 20 to 14. What a job they've done at Antwerp turning that football program around. Not too long ago, they couldn't even face a uh, varsity schedule. Yeah, they had some uh, number issues. We were there uh, opening round of the playoffs a year ago. Yeah, it was a great game. Almost won by Patrick Henry. Last play of the game gets down to about the two-yard line. Edwards gets the pitch, cuts inside as we take a look at this replay. Trying to run the toss to the left. Kind of like Edwards' vision. Not only does he have good speed and quickness on the outside, but sees the cutback lane, gets a first down for Tenor. And they'll give him six. So it is Northwest State Community College first down out to the 48-yard line. Now we saw the offensive numbers Antwerp Patrick Henry had a year ago. So what happens? Miles and I show up. And they play a 14-7 game. <laughs> it, was, it was like that. It was a slippery field that night. It was. Short run on first down. Pick up of a couple. Tenora will get just inside the Ayersville territory. Yeah, the Antwerp team returns uh, Carson Ultimus, the quarterback, who was uh, really sensational moving his, foot, his feet around, creating passing lanes, and getting some first downs with his feet, if I remember correctly. Good look, defensive coordinator Chuck Martinez. The hat backwards. Not an Atlanta Brave. That could be. Well, if you're a defensive coordinator, it's one of the things that you, when you go to defensive coordinator school, how to wear your hat. Edwards again trying to find a little bit of running room. Got to have your hat backwards, or it's got to be really pulled down over your eyes. It's got to be something like that. And you can't look like you got your, your hoodie or your pants out of the closet. All defensive coordinators look like they got to get their clothes off the floor. If you're an offensive coordinator, you can be all pressed and nice oh, and okay. clothes hanging. But defensive coordinator is kind of gruff. Didn't know there was rules for all this. Learn yeah, something new every time you yep. work with you. It's third and five coming up here for Tenora. Give it to the first man through. Jiz Edwards once again. And the first man is going to stop him. Going to be inside, collapse real quick. See who, oh, it's Hayden Kraft that gets to him first, number 70. Fourth down and three. Looks like Tenora is going to go. And down 10, starting to run out of time. Yeah, you think maybe you're going to get four possessions from here the rest of the game. You have to score on two of them. I don't even know if you're going to get that many. Two or three. Yeah. Yep. I'd say three at the most. Down by ten, you're going to have to score on those. Unless your, unless your defense or special teams comes up with a play. Here they go. Fourth down and three. Play clock running out of time. Let's see if Tenori gets this off. They do as they go to Edwards. And he's going to be pushed backwards and won't even be close to the first down yardage. 
Now watch Ayersville, they're gonna jump it right there. Handicraft gets there, Weston McGuire, he times it up. They meet it in the backfield. That offensive line, Tenor never had a chance. Well schooled, Chuck Martinez, defensive corner for Ayersville, has gotta be excited You see Weston McGuire get off the ground right there celebrating. They knew that play was coming. They timed it just right and made it blow up in the backfield. Had no gain on the run. So Ayersville get this back, 2.12 to go in the quarter. And the goal for Ayersville is to make sure we're deep into this fourth quarter before Tenor is back on offense. Hand off, here's Burner. Burner's gonna be tripped up, still fighting as McGuire continues. McGuire and Anders have had their own little game going on all night. Yeah, I guess he landed Newsom also right there. 76, just barely gets the Kurt Angle ankle lock on him or else he might have kept running. You don't have to get a big hit all the time, just get a piece. That time got Burner's feet, knocked him to the ground. And gain a two on the run, so second and eight now from the 47. I got man down here on the twins. No safety help in the middle of the field. Let's see Weston McGuire going in motion. He's the third receiver out there. Throw it out to him. Pass is caught in the flat. And McGuire will have a Northwest State Community College first down. Yeah, it's a really nice play against man coverage. It's a man beater, right? Bring the motion. The safety is going to be on him. Well, he's going to give him an 11-yard cushion because he's going to get caught in the wash. Two inside guys run vertical. That is easy peasy for Ayersville. Free yards on man coverage. They work into the Tenora side of the field to the Ram 44. A good job by the Ayersville staff recognizing man coverage, going with a man beater for big yardage. Alan Stino has burner in motion, the quick pop pass on the pitch, trying to cut up field. Burner able to get up and out of bounds, no, he stayed in. Thought he ran out of bounds. Instead, it's gonna be another Northwest State Community College first down. Oh, I hope we get another look at this. We are, watch 58. He's gonna lead the way, Brady Clark. You wanna talk about pulling and getting on someone. Look at that, get down on the ground. How much you bench, it doesn't matter because he's gonna bench you off of me. He just throws him to the ground. That is a heck of a job but by an offensive lineman getting out front, leading yeah. burner. Yeah, it looks like there's an injured Tenora player down on that uh, Tenora sideline. How about Clark just bench pressing? That was impressive stuff. So it is a Northwest State Community College first down. We'll take a break and they take a look at the injured player here at WOSN. Taryn Ward, the injured player for Tenora. Good uh, news is that he was able to get up and uh, walk, the short walk at least, back to his sideline. Had a, a little bit of a limp, but it looks like he'll be all right. That was a good example of the speed of Burner, right? In the backfield, Javin Gaines almost got him for Tenora. But Burner's speed was just too <laughs> much. A mere mortal man would have been caught by Gaines, not Burner. First down for Ayersville to Tenora 31. And Howenstein <laughs> keep this one and it's a little different result for Tenora. Should have handed it off, right? <laughs> you take it, take it. Look, Gaines, Gaines just lifts. Quarter way all the way into the backfield. You, you know the whole thought process that entire play. Dang it, I'm tackling someone. <laughs> he almost got all three guys. That was an impressive play by Gaines. Lifts Cordaway out of the way. He is a human forklift out there. Yeah, it's also how the third quarter is gonna end. So Ayersville able to run off the clock. They still got 12 more minutes to go before they win back the victory bell. St. Mike's there in the uh, background. Absolutely gorgeous. Right. Beautiful night. Had the moon lit up. That's Sam that, and Curtis doing a good job getting our shots. Is that downtown Jewel? Hey. Downtown Jewel. I, I'm, I'm, I'm messing with it because Miles. Oh, there's an interception. First play of the final quarter. 
Howenstein thought he had a man open. Instead, kind of threw a bullet right to Joey Guzing Guzinger, excuse me. Yeah, this almost sticks in Guzinger. Almost went through him. Yeah, I never even saw him. Boy. He put, put his hands up in defense. Sure did. Tenor needed a turnover in the worst way. They come up with one. A little bit of glimmer. Door's not fully closed yet for Tenora. Rams take over here, 11.53 to play. A big play by Joey. Start from their own 33. Let's get fired up. Let's get fired up. Yeah. Looking to throw, under pressure. Scrambles back, jumps out of one, and he'll just throw this away. What a play just to go for no game. You're not kidding, Barner. I don't know how he gets out of this. It's going to be a play action. They're going to run post back to the other side, kind of throw it back, but it's well covered by Ayersville, and the pass rush almost gets to him one, two, three times. How about the strength of the sophomore to get out of it, and then the Werethal to throw it to what appears to be Anders, who was in the vicinity. Anders, yeah, was going to run around the sidelines, so no gain on the play in the incomplete pass. Second and 10. Graziani, snap gets away from him. Steps up, fires out. It's going to be stepped in front of. And this one's going to go six the other way. A pick six and the score as Howenstein plays a little defense as well. Yeah, Howenstein had three interceptions coming into the night. This is going to be the fourth one of the year, but none bigger than this one. He reads it so well. Comes up from a safety spot, trying to hit Edwards in the flat. And he's going to celebrate in a big way. Not only is he thinking about crossing the goal line, but he's thinking about ringing that bell coming up after this game. And knew exactly what to do with the football as soon as he secured the interception. Take that in for the score. Now 22-6. He'll stay out as the Pilots will again go for two. Takes the snap, has some blockers, and this one is going to be waved off. Remember years ago when uh, Hunter Prince was at Edgerton mm -hmm. and they'd go for it for two all the time and they'd kind of line up in a very similar formation. It was very tough to stop. This has been tough to stop for Tenora. The only way they've been able to stop it really is when they've had the false start on this. Yeah, that's exactly what they have there. So we'll redo this. Yeah, I think they're going to throw it this time, change of personnel. You know, now you're backed up to about an eight yard try. What a flip on the field and on the scoreboard. Felt like Tenora still had a chance. Well, you know Graziani never saw Howenstein. No. Just saw Edwards open. Threw it out there. Great break on it by Howenstein. Two point conversion try once again. This one thrown out. And then it's going to be dropped and incomplete. So two point conversion, no good. But Ayersville with the touchdown. Pilots pull away. A 22 6, and we'll take a break. Twenty-two six. We play here at Kressel Stadium. Ayersville inching closer. And again, it's been a uh, it's tough sledding here against Tenora. And again, Rams have won five in a row, fifteen of the last sixteen. They've done that to a lot of teams in the GMC. Now wherever they they place the bell in Ayersville, you might want to start dusting that spot off. Getting it all polished up and ready to go. They are close to capturing that victory bell and putting it in what they say the rightful spot. I think they've got, yeah, they've got a spot kind of front and center of the uh, trophy cases, the uh, newly built Ayersville High School. Yeah, Andrew Mickey, and we were talking to him before the game, he said, that bell's coming back with us. He was confident. <laughs> he was there are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He was, he was pretty confident. Good kick return again. 
Tenor's going to have some pretty good field position here, still trying to uh, fight back. Tenor's had a good job, uh, had a good job all night long on the return game to the left. Anders again gets them to the plus side of field position. A lot of things have to happen for them to win this football game. That's one of them, getting themselves in good field position. So they'll start on the Ayersville side of the field at the 49. Graziani looking to throw under pressure. This went out in the flat. Anders unable to hold on to that one. It's incomplete. Now the pressure really threw this off. Had a receiver in the middle of the field that was going to be wide open. I think it's Clark that gets in his way, though, so he can't see the field. And Noah Bodie, actually, number 50, that was getting in the quarterback's line of sight. Graziani, poor guy. Every time he's dropped back the throw, he has had to deal with all kinds of white and powder blue jerseys. And they've uh, come after this young sophomore, Preston and Duty, after the injury to uh, Gavin Eckert. Second down, Graziani looks to throw this time, goes over the far sideline. That one dropped as well as Edwards unable to hang on to it. And it's going to be third down. Looks like one of the coaches is going to grab Edwards. Let's make sure uh, nothing bad happens, and now it's third down. Uh, that Ayersville secondary, they definitely know where the threats are. Do you see all the white jerseys flying over to Edwards in the flat? Had he even caught it, he would have got no gain after the catch. Third and 10. <coughs> Tenora trying to not waste the uh, field position. Graziani stepping up, looks to throw once again. Can a double clutches? Long throw. That one's going to be complete to the sideline. I think it's going to be a little bit short. It's Carter Gilliam come up with a catch. Gilliam's going to catch it. I think it's Wolfram that's going to knock him. Short of the first down. Right there, turn up, get it. Wolfram just just, just enough of them forces him out of bounds. Yeah, it's gonna be fourth and inside of a yard. Well, they might be, are they gonna, we get a timeout. We got a player down. So. Yeah, I think it's Wolfram that is down, came up a little gimpy after that play. Fourth down is short, you gotta go for Tenora. Yep. You wonder if quarterback sneak normally if you have the senior Eckert in, but with the sophomore, do you, do you sneak it with him? What do you run here? You get it to Edwards at fullback, but you got to come up with your best play right here of the ball game to get the first down. So pointing out to the trainer, I don't know if you take a helmet maybe right to the side of the knee. A cold night like this, you turn it a little bit. Might have pulled something a little. See, I never moved fast enough, so it didn't matter, didn't it? Didn't move fast enough to pull muscles. It can't get hurt if you don't get off the bench. <laughs> That's what I did well. The Lions red team didn't let you get off the bench yeah, back in the day? Not a lot. That's why we won so many games. Fourth and inches, it's going to be the quarterback sneak, second effort. Looks like Graziani, that pile moving forward. It is going to be enough for the Northwest State Community College first down. 10.55 left. You got first down inside the 40. Start speeding this game a little bit up if you're Tenora. At some point in time, they're going to have to take a shot vertically, get some quick points, but are you going to be able to protect Graziani? That's been the problem for him is every time he drops back, there's been some white and blue in his face. First down from the 38. Graziani again under pressure, throws this one. Nearly intercepted with a one hand. It's going to be incomplete. And Noah Bodie again going to apply pressure. Got away with a false start. You see Bodie right in the face of Graziani. Ball's going to be deflected. Almost landed in Anders after the deflection. You see Howenstein holding his head. Can't believe he didn't come over that interception. The second down here. Stops clock, 10.26 to play. Abe Delano is in the backfield as well. Low snap, Graziani gets this one under pressure. Continues to run and finally he's going to be brought down. Back of the 45, ball pops out at the end, but the officials say 
He's going to be down, but chased for a long way by Brady Clark. Yeah, Brady Clark, he's had himself a heck of a second half. Comes up with a fumble recovery. This time going to chase down the sophomore, get him to the ground. Very fortunate that Graziani didn't fumble as the big hatchet came over top of Clark. Three and a half sacks coming in tonight. Clark adds that total in a big way. You might have heard the Ayersville staff up here yelling Brady's name. They're fired up. Loss of about 10. It's now third and 20. Let's see the, uh, the tear of the uniform. Yeah, the old tearaway jersey. And now we've got whistles. And Tenora might want to discuss what they want to do here. Yeah, are you old enough to remember the old tearaway I jersey? Do. I do remember the Earl tearaway Campbell jersey. Earl Campbell going through about 10 of them a game. There it is right there. I might have the, is that got the shoulder pad strap in there as well? That is a shoulder pad strap bouncing out. So he's got a little bit of work to do. But Some uh, needle and thread work this weekend, that's really? for sure. Mom's doing that, right? <laughs> no way Brady Clark's sewing that up. Right. Mom will be more than happy. <laughs> you get this win tonight, Mom will sew that up for you. That's right. So again, we want to thank our title sponsor for our broadcast tonight between Ayersville and Tenora. State Bank's been with us all season long. Invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. You, know, you, get, you, you get sacked sometimes with great moves to beat the offensive lineman. Uh, some other times you get it with just straight hustle, and that's what Brady Clark did on that time. Just kept running, chasing the quarterback. Good news uh, for Ayersville, third and 20. We'll tell you about it here. A flag down, pass is caught by Edwards. Looks like it's going to be enough for Northwest State Community College first down. Now it's going to come back as Tenora was never set. Yeah. So good news for Ayersville is up off the bench is Ray Wolfram. Kind of running around here. <laughs> well, that's a heck of a play by Abe Delano. Blows up the back to his side. <laughs> Almost gets to Graziani with the right hand. That is a huge penalty against Tenora after the big pickup by Edwards. Third and 20 is now third and longer than 20. Third and 25. And they're going trips to the top side. Graziani. Trying to step up, kind of flat foots this one. Pass is going to be caught once again, this time short of the first down. But Tenor, who's obviously going to go for it, does have a fourth and somewhat manageable. <laughs> Graziani looking at the rush, just kind of at the last second, throws it up. It's almost like he wants to wait before he's going to get hit before he throws it. Poor young man's been hit on every single throw. Very fortunate that didn't get intercepted as that ball hung and hung and hung in the air. Really, fourth down, big play. This is the play of the game right here. So you got about 15 on the pass play. It's fourth and five. This one's gonna be thrown over the head of Edwards, incomplete. Ayersville defense will hold and they'll take over with the football. Uh, even if Edwards had caught it, the Ayersville defense would have held them short of the fourth down. Tough when you throw in front of the sticks. Because you were, you were hoping that the receiver's going to catch and make a run. But that is well played by the secondary of Ayersville. Pilots take over. Just under eight and a half to go. Might be able to salt this one away. Yeah, if you're Ayersville, you keep this on the ground, right? Run that football. Inside give here. On, West. This Weston McGuire, very Barry Sanders-esque to get back to the line of scrimmage. And the only difference was Barry would make the guys miss and keep running. McGuire just made him miss. Weston McGuire is going to be inside handoff, the counter off the jet sweep action. And Might have got a little bit of help from a hold there as well. Yeah, how about that stiff arm? Get off me, Cole Anders. He's going to run about 40 yards to get back to a negative one run. Now, well, you know, what are you going to do? Second 11 coming up here. Well, good news for Ayersville, though. Ate up a lot of time. 
Let that clock keep running. Snap just inside of five seconds every single time for Howenstein. That's exactly what they do. Inside give back to Berner. Berner struggling just to get back to the line of scrimmage. That's an order doing what you have to do. Pressing the line of scrimmage, trying to attack it, make plays in the backfield. Second man in, try to get that football out. They got to get the ball back to their offense in the worst way. Yeah, no gain on the play, so third down. Are we up there? There we go. Smiles waving. You see some smiles in the Ayersville stands, huh? Some, some maroon that doesn't really fit in. On cold nights, it doesn't matter what the colors are, right? There's Randy Roberts, people's champion right there. There we go. We should highlight your hair, too. Beautiful hair on Randy Roberts. It's third down, Howenstein. Now he's going to throw unloads this one, trying to come back. Diving effort and ruled incomplete. It was all vertical, so when he broke the pocket, people lost their responsibility on scramble. Somebody's supposed to come back to the ball. Someone's supposed to break it off and go short. One guy goes deep. Everybody just kept running right away. They outran his arm. Good news, good news for Tenor, though. Stop the clock. Gives him a chance. 6.39 to go. Good to see effort out of this Tenor bunch. Again, have the missing a handful of players and without their coach tonight. And they'll block the punt. And the Rams are going to set up at the 20-yard line. Well, how about the effort of Tenora? They're not giving up. Break free on special teams. Get the block. Yeah, I think Trenton DeLarbor, number nine. We're going to take a look at this one again. No, Just. I'm sorry. He recovered it. Who? Yeah, that's going to be 45 that comes up with the block, and that that's is Graham Askins. He's been a playmaker all year long. <laughs> look at him hold his forearm. Cold night, that football does not feel good. Yeah, there's going to be a mark good. there in the morning. That is for sure. Yeah, it'll feel good if they put a score in right here. They've been in this spot, them being Tenora, and all they've managed is a couple of field goals. Ayersville defense has held. They've run the bubble screen out of empty. Graziani back in a shotgun. Send a man in motion in Edwards. Edwards will get the handoff. Makes the first man miss. Still on his feet. And he's going to be close to first down yardage. Well, that's a special run right here. Watch Edwards on kind of an ill-conceived play, but they get it off on the crossbuck action. One-on-one -on -one with Weston McGuire. Gives him a little okey-doke inside. Weston McGuire breaks his ankle. Two great athletes one-on-one -on -one right there. That time Edwards gets the win. Yeah, they are going to give him the first down, so a uh, Northwest State first down, first and goal. Nope. Well, they st it's still the down box. There is our girl. There's Sam. Graziani looking to throw. Comes back. This one knocked away. It's going to be incomplete. Really great play by Abe Delano. Plays his responsibility. Doesn't pay attention to the quarterback rolling away. Comes back ready for the interception. Forgot the one thing. Got to catch it. Was that important? <laughs> it is. Oh, Abe Delano, he's beside himself. Would have been the game clinch and interception right there. Just goes off the hands. Second and 10 now from the 11. Not a lot of urgency out of this Tenora offense yet. Split backs. Now a little counter action. This time going to Cole Anders. And Anders will get a couple of yards as he'll get inside the 10. Yeah, never a good sign when your offensive line is looking at the end of the run, and that's what happened there. The entire offensive line of Tenora looking at Anders carrying the football. That means he missed blocks. You could have picked about five names in white jerseys to call who made that tackle. It's third and eight with the ball just inside the 10-yard line. Tenora can get a first down at about the one. It's the last thing they're worried about. Graziani, double clutch. Long throw, that one knocked away. That one was nearly picked off. Yeah, another dangerous throw. Throws it late to the outside. It's going to allow Burner to read it. Yeah, Burner See almost him. picks yeah. it off. Entering your screen. Sets up fourth down. There's Lucas Fishpaw on the coverage as well. 
Who's our guy, Curtis? He's a uh, Tenora grad, 1976. I heard he once played on a broken ankle for Tenora back in 76 in a blizzard. Fourth down coming up here. Graziani for the end zone. It's got knocked away incomplete. And Ayersville will take over with 5.20 to go. Graziani trying to get some vision, rolls out to the right. Get some pressure that time by Abe Delano, throws it in the end zone. Well played by that Ayersville secondary, knocked it to the ground. 5.20 away from ringing that victory bell. Pilots take over at their own nine. And you gotta believe that was Tenor's best shot to get back into this one. Howenstein sends a man in motion. Give off to the left side as Burner trying to fight for yards out across the 10. And they run that jet sweep counter. Come back inside. Well played by Deckenhouse. Forces it back inside to Anders and Edwards who makes the tackle. Let's pick up four on the run, second and six from the 13. So McGuire will go in motion. Gonna load up to one side, they run that way. And this will be, looks like, a Northwest State Community College first down. Getting a good run is Howenstein. No, oh, he doesn't run like a quarterback, does he? Mm -mm. He gets that line of scrimmage, he lowers the shoulder pad level, and he's gonna deliver some hurt on whoever comes up and blocks him. Get a first down tonight brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Northwest State, get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. Pitch again. Ayersville just running kind of long developing plays that take as much time off the clock as they can. Yeah, a little bit of a pass, pop pass. Quarterbacks love those because it adds to their passing total and they don't really have to do much. It's a nice play, too, if you drop it, it's just an incomplete pass. Now yeah, to Delano, cuts up field. Went for about a yard, so second and nine. Ayersville still deep in their own territory, but uh, out to the 20. You gotta believe if they stop them here on third down, Tenora will use one of their last two timeouts. Then use the last one after third down. Howenstein with a give again to Burner. Burner tries to spin out of a tackle. Nowhere to go. As Tenora does force the third down, it looks like they will use one of their timeouts. Yeah, you'll call it again here if you stop them on third down. Furriers will be happy about that, though. Run the football, let Tenora go ahead, call their last timeout, and then protect the punt. You know, that was the last time they punted. You forgot to punt it, or hold on to it, protect it, rather. Tenora almost scooped that up and scored. So with the uh, timeout, we'll step aside as well. And Ayersville trying to hold on to this lead. There's, there's Sam in her treehouse that they built. I guess. Sam is responsible for giving you guys the great uh, replay, replay uh, shots. Does a good job. Curtis gives you the wide angle. Look at you with these technical terms. <laughs> Third down run straight ahead. And it's going to be shy of the first down, and it looks like Tenora will use its final timeout. Stops the clock with 3.10 to go. Sets up a fourth down. And about five. Now you protect the punter, or if you really want to drive a stake into your big rival's heart, fake punt here, because you know everybody in green's coming after this one. So you run a little fake punt action, pull everybody. It might be about the only thing we haven't seen yet in our football season. 
Yeah, it's a good point. Maybe we'll see it right here. Coach Mickey talking to his guys. I think they're going to go ahead and punt the football because he is really being demonstrative about protection right there. You see that? He's making eye contact with everybody. Know who you got. Know your gap. A couple things when, you, when you're protecting a punt. You're either a gap scheme or you're a man scheme. And if you're a man scheme, they move at the last second. That gets tough. Guys get confused. Usually you're a gap scheme. Everybody steps inside or outside. Depending on what the scheme is, take whoever's in that gap. Well, is going to help Bearsville out. They're going to send twin backs. So they only have about nine to rush. They're going to set up a return. Short punt, this one near midfield. Graziani with it. He's going to take a hit at the 45. <laughs> it looked like they had a little bit of a special play there where they're going to toss it to Edwards at the last second. But Edwards kind of lost track of Graziani. Tenora will start this one in Ayersville territory. Still trying to. Uh, Ayersville cheerleaders got to flip those cards. You're on defense now, ladies. There they go. See, all you had to do was just tell them. Yeah, there you go. All right, there you there go. Good go. job. I like it, though. One side offense, the other side defense. Where's the special team card? Is that like your, uh, your Waffle House play chart? Oh. <laughs> Don't say Waffle House. I get hungry. Never a bad meal there. Just over three to play. Anders would be the man in motion. Graziani, good ball fake. Trying to step up. Again, just hasn't had a whole lot of time and a whole lot of room to throw the football. This one's going to one-hop its intended target incomplete. The quarterback coaches love a, a drill where the quarterback drops back and then they wave him and, <laughs> and simulate him moving in the pocket. They've either done that drill a million times here at Tenora, or he's just naturally gifted at it because he can navigate the pocket extremely well. Graziani, tough to bring down. First guy won't get to him. Second down for Tenora. Again, the Rams got uh, deep in Ayersville territory, last possession. They've done that a few times tonight, Miles. Just had to settle for a couple of field goals. Yeah, the one right before half, I think, was huge. They wouldn't be able to score a touchdown there. Might have been a different game. Pressure coming once again. Graziani didn't feel it at first, but he's going to feel the pit that time as he is going to be laid out by Abe Delano. Yeah, Delano's going to start on the near side. You see him right there, almost get to him. Gets a little bit of a piece and then keeps staying with him. Gets Graziani to the ground that time. That Tenora, that Ayersville defense, Chuck Martinez got to be excited. They've been relentless chasing Graziani all night long. Third and 20 now. So backs Tenor up to their own side of the field. Graziani looking to throw. Again, five white jerseys, and that one, his arm might have been hit. That one, and what, sideways falls incomplete. And it looks like a last ditch effort coming up here for Tenora. It's going to be fourth and long with 2.05 to go. Let's go, let's go. Ayersville looks like they're going to be ready for a big showdown coming up next week. Fake the one pass, Graziani. Now deep downfield, this one's going to. Overthrow, everyone falls incomplete. And Ayersville with a minute 57 to go. All they'll have to do is run out the clock as Tenora is all out of timeouts. That's an Ayersville first down! like Ayersville just go right into victory formation here. Might have to get one first down, but that is going to do it. Ayersville go to 6-1. and one. More importantly, move to 4-0 and oh in the GMC. Tenora in a spot they haven't been in in a while at 4-3 and 2-2. And, two and, two. and more importantly, Computer points a big one as Ayersville came in third in Division 7, Region 26, Tenora 12th 
in Division 5, Region 18. So when the new points are calculated, this one for playoff seating will be a big one as Ayersville appears to be on its way to the playoffs. Tenora could win enough down the stretch. So we'll see one more snap coming here as the play clock down under five seconds. Knee comes down. And Ayersville will have to do it just one more time. But a solid effort all around for the Pilots. As they snap what's been a five game losing streak to their rivals from across the river. Officials gonna make sure everyone stays lined up on side. That is the final snap. Clock is gonna run out and the Ayersville Pilots have come to Tenora. Their fans are excited. Big win for Ayersville tonight here, 22-6. They will retain the victory bell. They'll shake hands. You'll see some players make a beeline straight for the victory bell as it is gonna head back to Ayersville. Final seconds tick away. And a final here tonight from Tenora. 22-6, Ayersville gets the win. We'll take a timeout and we'll head down to the field where our Miles Holiday try to check in with our dynamic dude of the night right after this. Twenty-two-six, our final score. The Ayersville Pilots have come here to Tenora, snapped five-game losing streak. More importantly, they have regained the victory bell that is down there somewhere. As uh, the Ayersville fans are fired up, there's a representative from the Crescent News. It's a big deal. They're ringing the bell. They deserve it. Ayersville back on top again. They have uh, gone to six and one. Take a look, some final numbers on this one. Ayersville runs 46 plays for 193 yards. Tenora 56 for 155. Time of possession sort of evened out. Ayersville 26 minutes to uh, 22 for Tenora. 31 running attempts for 43 yards for Ayersville. 35 for 77 for Tenora. Biggest difference in the passing game, 150 pass yards for Ayersville, 78 for Tenora. Took a penalties, uh, Ayersville flagged seven times for 50 yards. Tenora, just three for 15. So 22 to six is the final. We'll take another timeout, and then we'll try to see. Oh, actually, it looks like Miles Holiday has our dynamic dude, so I'll see if I can successfully kill enough time. And Miles pointing out directions here. And let's see if we can uh, head down to the field with our Miles Holiday. Yeah, I'm with our dynamic dude of the night, uh, Tyson Schlechter. Just got done ringing the bell uh, as a senior winning this rivalry. How special was it getting a chance to ring that bell right there? It's awesome. It's just great feeling, man. We put in all that work all week, uh, ready for Sonora, and we just came out and executed what we did. Hey, Coach uh, told us before the football game, uh, Coach Mickey, he said, hey, that bell's coming back home with us. How confident were you guys this week? We had a lot of confidence. We were all week. We were watching film. We were getting prepared, and it, it showed. It showed tonight. It seems like this is a real close team, a real special team. You guys now moved to six and zero. Could very easily be seven zero. What, what's the bond like in this team? We're family. That's all I can say. We're we're all we're all really close. Every Thursday night, we're all hanging out. It's awesome. It's an awesome experience. Another big GMC win. You're going to be moving forward now against an Antwerp team. That's going to be a big game next next week. What are you going to do to get that GMC title? I've got confidence, Coach Mickey and Coach Bainfeld, all the coaches, they'll prepare us all week, and we'll come out and do what we can. Uh, last question for you. Walk us through the big play right before half. Really busted this game open on a, on a, a little pop pass, a seam route, if you will, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. What, what was the thought process behind that play? 
uh, coach, coach asked me if I wanted the ball. I said, yeah, coach, put it in my hands. And it wasn't the greatest pass, but I made it work. And we celebrated like heck at halftime. Uh, congratulations. Go ring that bell some more. Our dynamic dude of the night, uh, Tyson Slachter, had himself one heck of a night. How great is it to be in the powder, powder blue and light and yellow? Well, Miles, he's talked about ringing the bell. I didn't know if you meant literally or metaphorically the way he rung the bell. Some of the players for Tenora again. 22-6 our final. Ayersville's come to Tenora and uh, got a big win, as Miles mentioned. Big showdown in the GMC coming up next week between Ayersville and Antwerp. We want to thank everyone for making our night here in Tenora possible. Starts with the AD at Tenora High School, Mr. Craig Rudder. Of course, I want to thank Ken Reeker, our director, Curtis and Sam. Great uh, shots that uh, they've worked on the cameras for us all night. And, of course, Kelly Getz back at Master Control at our WOSN studios in Lima. So, once again, our final Ayersville Pirates for the first time in five years. They get the victory bell as they defeat Tenora 22-6. to For my partner, Miles Holiday and our entire WOSN crew, I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching live football, everyone.